Welcome, friends, to my Warriors of Chaos Army video, where I will be taking a look at the Warriors of Chaos, their units, their heroes. Now, usually I'd start off by detailing most, if not all, of the heroes, but... <laughs> the Warriors of Chaos have over 20 named heroes, so, uh... I'll just be picking a few here, or this video would be six hours long, so uh, I ramble enough as it is, so let's try and limit the amount. First up, a personal favorite of mine, the Troll King Throg. Now, Throg himself is not all that impressive. He's got a pretty good leadership score for a troll at 8, with uh, 10 leadership being max, so pretty damn good. He's relatively unlikely to turn around and run like a little bitch. And he does get a reasonably potent breath attack, though uh, in his case it's not really a breath attack. It's a vomit attack. He vomits on the enemy, and being a troll capable of digesting stones, that vomit is a pretty damn potent acid. But just being a slightly better troll isn't very impressive. It's what this guy allows you to do with your army, where he gets really interesting. Now, before I explain why he's interesting, I'll need a little bit of a uh, reference point for you here. The way Warhammer armies work on tabletop is that you have a limited amount of uh, slots, so to say, for specific characters, based on the points value of your army. So, say you have an army worth 2,000 points. Now, the points means that you can buy units for 2,000 points, with every single unit having a set points value. But there are additional restrictions. For example, you can take uh, infinite core units, but you can only take two or three special units, and then you can only take one rare unit. And you can only take one lord level character, for example. Now this cap rises as the points cap, the total points cap, of the army rises. So in a 4,000 point army, you can have more special and rare units and more lord level characters. Now that I've explained that, the reason why Throg is so awesome is that he allows you to take trolls, which are normally a special unit, and therefore quite limited in numbers, as a core unit, allowing you, if you so wish, to build an entire army of trolls. Which is just hilarious in and of itself. I mean, if you thought an army of ogres was overkill... <laughs> uh... Now, granted, you probably don't want to take an army consisting entirely of trolls, because while trolls are pretty damn good, all of them having regeneration, pretty damn high strength, several of them having breath attacks, uh, well, vomit attacks, they are damnably expensive, and so they are going to be struggling against the nice big fat units of infantry that can simply just grind them down and outlast them. However, here again comes the funny part. With Throg in your army, you have that additional oomph that you can put into a unit. And in tabletop, I've had some truly amusing little games where I've put this bastard at the head of a unit of 17 trolls. Not to mention the look of just sheer outrage on your opponent's face as you pull out troll after troll after troll after troll after troll after troll after troll, after troll out of your army bag. So for sheer hilarity, Throg has to be on the list now. He would be such a cool character in a Total War game. You'd have to do something special to get him, I think. Like, you'd have to, uh, I don't know, um, go through a quest, kind of, like an event chain to uh, get him, and then you can get Throg, and then you can use him to uh, recruit trolls at a reduced price, for example. And it would just be a really cool thing to have a proper army made out of trolls in a Warhammer game. That would be uh, pretty damn amazing, I think. 
probably not incredibly balanced, but then again, while trolls are pretty damn powerful, they do struggle with ranked up units and are particularly vulnerable to cannonballs, because the cannonball can bounce through the troll, causing multiple wounds and killing the poor bastard outright, and often as not, leaves buddy behind him. Next, another character I pick for just sheer badassery is Colex Sun Eater. To give you a bit of an impression of the sheer size of this bastard, take a look at this wonderful little piece of art here. And you'll see near the bottom of the picture that those are humans. Yeah, he's, uh, he's that big. And he commands lightning, so essentially he is a building-sized Thor, equipped with Mjolnir and heavy armor. And speaking of heavy armor, Kolik comes with a plus four scaly skin, and he's got plus two armor. So the bastard is nigh on invulnerable for anything short of black powder weapons or cannonballs, but even then, this crazy little creature sits at Eight wounds, which is absurd. He is one of the toughest bastards in the entire Warhammer universe. And due to his sheer size and, uh, well, his considerable armament with a hammer the size of a man, he is a pretty damn potent melee combatant. And he has a ranged attack. He literally just fires lightning at a unit, which is incredibly potent for taking out small units of light cavalry. Now, in Total War terms, this should literally just be a, a hero character that you get granted through an event chain or something like that. He's literally just a one-man unit. You throw this big bastard at whatever you need squashed, and more than likely, you're gonna squash it. But on the other hand, being as big as he is, he is the biggest pulsating bullseye in an army made almost completely out of giant pulsating bullseyes. So I expect him to receive all kinds of love and attention. And while he is a damn tough customer, he's still going to be eating so much firepower that I think you could balance the dude relatively easily just from the sheer fact that, well, you can't miss the bugger. Alternatively, he could be a really cool uh, boss type battle, like for example, say you're laying siege to one of the Chaos uh, Citadels, like one of their main strongholds up in the north, and you've got to fight this bastard in city streets. Now that would be interesting. <laughs> And then there's Wulfric the Wanderer, Lord of, well, swearing. And I'm not joking when I'm saying that. Wulfric the Wanderer is a fantastic little piece of lore fluff. <laughs> He's a hilarious character. Essentially, he is, well, a really good fighter. Of course, he's uh, the equal of a Chaos Lord in most cases, and superior to many. And he was essentially set on a quest by Korn to go fight all kinds of horrible thingity bobs. He's killed dragons, tomb kings, dwarf lords, elven princes, you name it, he's probably beaten the shit out of it at some point or another. But his most amusing blessing is the gift of tongues. He was given a mutation by Korn, presumably, that allows him to issue an irrefutable challenge to any person in any language. What this means is he is capable of calling your penis size into question in such an infuriating way that you just have to fight him. I'd like to read for you a little uh, quote from the Warriors of Chaos book about one of his insults. So if you will excuse me. Face me if you dare, stunted whelp, or do you lack even an elven maid's courage? I thought the sons of Grungi were great warriors, but uh, perhaps you are no true dwarf. Indeed, maybe you are instead some breed of bearded goblin, though in truth, I have seen a finer beard on a troll's backside. 
Wolfric the Wanderer to Dwarf King Thurbert Stonebeard in perfect Dwarvish. So as you can see, this guy is a wonderful little creature. He is literally just able to curse you out in such a way that you just have to fight him. And that is in fact his special power on the tabletop. Now on the tabletop, when two units are fighting each other, the champion of each respective unit has the option of issuing a challenge to the champion of the other unit, which essentially locks the two in combat. Now the opposing hero can decline the challenge, which forces him to move to the back line of his unit, but stops him from getting his face potentially kicked in. And if the challenger is Wolfric the Wanderer, there aren't that many characters that have any real hope of not getting completely shat on by this guy. However, with his amazing skills at calling into doubt your mother's fidelity, you can not deny his challenge, which means that he's such an amazing character sniper. You get this guy and his unit into combat with anything, and he will force that expensive special character on the enemy side to fight him, and in all due likelihood lose. Additionally, at the beginning of the game, you can nominate any model on the enemy army to be his chosen target, gaining him plus two strength and the ability to reroll all failed hits against that model. So, essentially, while fighting someone, the bastard has the stat line equal of a greater bloody demon, and he rerolls all of his attacks. And if that's still not enough, he has a special ability that allows him to pop up with a unit of marauders on any board edge, putting him in an instantaneous flanking position. And since his challenge cannot be refused because it is such a particularly scathing comment offered in the target's own language with a pitch perfect pronouncement. You will essentially be able to move the enemy character from the front of the unit to the flank of the unit where he will promptly kick the shit out of him. Now I grant you that'd be pretty hard to implement in uh, Total War Warhammer terms. However, seeing as in my personal hopes and dreams I hope that they'll do a lot more with characters this time around, it they could do it, and it would be a really cool character, as it would allow you playing Chaos, if they do make Chaos playable, which uh, I'm still not really that keen on, but oh well, to have a really interesting mechanic for dealing with certain powerful enemy characters. And if Chaos isn't a playable faction, and is instead an AI-controlled horde of some sorts, Oh god, wouldn't you just absolutely dread facing a horde led by uh, this guy here? I mean, your big, beautiful, badass lord level character that you have raised from mere captainhood for a hundred bloody turns now has to fight this fucker. And he's almost guaranteed to lose, and you can't even avoid him. Oh, he would be a beautiful opponent. Plus, his model just looks amazingly kick-ass. I mean, all of those skulls and shit probably weighs him down like crazy, but he just doesn't care, does he? It's more important to look good than to perform well. One more hero, based on just pure awesome funny fluffiness, is Sigwald the Magnificent. This dainty little prissy boy is the Warhammer universe answer to King Joffrey, the biggest twat to ever have walked the Warhammer universe. And while King Joffrey was dispatched rather easily, this particular bastard has regeneration the equals of a troll, and even if hacked into tiny little screaming pieces, he still somehow manages to pull himself back together again. In addition, being a Chaos Lord, despite the fact that he looks like a good guy, which is the point here, Sigwald sees himself not as a bad guy, but as the hero of his own story, so to say. He is, of course, an absolutely kick-ass melee combatant, except for one minor flaw. 
Sigvold is so in love with his own reflection that occasionally in battle he'll catch a glimpse of his own reflection in his shield or an enemy's weapon or in the enemy's armor or whatever and he'll just be awestruck by how beautiful he is and will literally stop fighting so that he can mirror himself in his shield and admire his own wonderfulness. Little Peacock even has his own retinue of shield bearers, and all of their shields are polished to a perfect shine so that Sigwald can marvel in his majestic beauty and perfect jawline in the reflection of a dozen mirrors, even in the middle of battle. And if the shield bearers were to be brutally murdered while doing so, well, who gives a shit? But, in all due likelihood, the only ones that are going to be dying are the shield bearers, as Sigwald himself has a 1 plus armor save. So he succeeds his armor save on a dice of 1 plus on a dice 6. The only things that can kill this fucker is stuff so powerful that they bypass armor or otherwise armor piercing. In short, the only things that have actually got any real chance of piercing this guy's armor is a dude on a heavy horse with a lance charging at him full tilt. And even that's got a pretty good chance of just bouncing off his marvelously sculptured abs. And if you by some miracle actually do pierce his armor, like I said, the dude's got regeneration on pair of that of a troll. But again, you need to have this guy in the army just because of sheer lulls. Imagine having this dude at the head of a band of Chaos Warriors absolutely butchering their way through the enemy army until, suddenly, Sigmund just halts right in the middle of the enemy army and stops to admire his own good looks. Ah, uh, he would be a wonderful character to love and to absolutely hate. And again, while the implementation may be a bit wonky, is just too funny a character to leave alone. So I've already done far more heroes than normal, but I've just got to do one last hero, and I've saved the best for last here, Galrosh the Great Drake, first of the Chaos Dragons. Originally, Galrosh was a noble high elf high dragon. But the powers of chaos ripped him apart, splitting his head in two so that now he has two birth weapons, because why not? And being a dragon, he's extremely intelligent, so he's also a level 4 mage, the highest possible level of mage. In addition to this, he is of course a dragon, which means he's relatively potent and close combat as well. But there's a catch. The noble spirit of the dragon he once was still exists within Galarach's tortured mind, so every turn he has to take a leadership test. Now, he has 9 leadership, so you can't fail this too often, but every time he does, he's going to attack himself. And although that's a reasonably big problem, he's still a dragon with two breath weapons, and he doesn't breathe a just good old fashioned fire, no, he has the breath of change. Which forces the target hit to take a toughness test, and if they fail, they get removed from the board with no saves of any kind allowed. Which makes him the ultimate special hero killer. In total war terms, he'd essentially just have a really ridiculously powerful breath weapon, and of course he'd be a dragon, which is in itself pretty damn awesome. And of course, while pretty damn unreliable, you know, with attacking himself, though that probably wouldn't work in total war game, he'd simply just maybe go retard and just stand there being a moron, much like uh, dear old Sigvald. Oh, and by the way, Sigvald is like 500 years old, so uh, those uh, boyish good looks of his, well, that speaks more to his personal preference than anything else. Moving on, <laughs> Galvaj. While probably pretty hard to implement in a Total War game, he just looks awesome. His model is cool, he would make a wonderful kind of boss battle fight if you want to implement that for the uh, faction's capital. 
And being the first of the Chaos Dragons, you kinda just you gotta have him. He just looks that cool. Now, I'll leave that be for the heroes. Now, I know I haven't mentioned some of the really big ones, like Bilakor, the, the Demon Prince, or uh, the Ever Chosen himself, but these guys could never be put in a Total War game. I mean, if Galrauch is too powerful for a Total War game, which he very well could be, Bilakor and uh, Lord of the End Times are going to be absolutely bloody impossible. So I'm just going to quietly move on to the generic characters section of the Warriors of Chaos army list. And we start out nice and big with a bloody demon prince. So right out of the bat, you have your first Lord level character be an absolute monster, quite literally. And as you can equip him with magical weapons from your magical weapons list, and he can be a general, and you can give him some special thingy bobs, you can kick this bastard out to be an absolutely unstoppable killing machine. With a ton of special rules and abilities like Hatred, which essentially just allows him to reroll failed two hits. He can be a wizard, he can fly. And kitted out properly, the bastard can be nigh on unkillable. Even cannons are going to have a little bit of trouble taking this bastard down. And if they do make Chaos a playable faction, and they implement a more detailed and complex character progression system, it would just be such a cool thing to see your Chaos Lord rise all the way from a mere champion to a demon prince. It would be just one of those crowning moments of a Total War campaign. And speaking of Chaos Lord, the Demon Prince's biggest weakness is the simple fact that he is ridiculously expensive, and in many cases a Chaos Lord will serve your needs just as well. Now, while not quite as ridiculously potent as a Demon Prince, of course, a Chaos Lord is still a vastly superior fighter to pretty much anything you can throw against him. And with the ability to be kitted out with all manners of nice little magical trinket, the guy is ridiculous. An ogre tyrant wielding a two-handed weapon is going to have trouble killing this guy. A vampire lord can't kill this guy. He is an absolute tank of a creature, a one-man unit. And while in most cases Chaos units don't really need the extra oomph to murder their opponents, put a Chaos Lord in a unit of Chaos Knights, and then throw in a, maybe a Mark of Corn, some special magical standards, etc., and you have a unit that will absolutely just steamroll pretty much anything and everything thrown in front of them. Though, again, he's pretty damn costly, and since he is just a human, cannons will work very good, very good indeed. In Total War terms, he's pretty damn easy to implement, he's just a really good combat character, and if they add in a proper character development system, like I hope they do, he would essentially be the top level of progression, except of course for Demon Prince, from a pretty long line that would see your guy start off as a marauder, working his way up to a champion, to an exalted champion, a chosen champion, then a chaos lord, etc. Building up a nice repertoire of potential weapons and powers along the way. Then there's the Sorcerer Lord, which is, of course, a wizard. He is a reasonably powerful wizard by uh, Warhammer standards, with the ability to uh, pick magics from the uh, lords of death, shadow, metal, or fire, which are all pretty damn good destructive lores, and he can also use the Chaos God's own magic. And despite being a wizard, the Sorcerer Lord is still a Chaos character, and he's still not a particularly bad fighter. Though, of course, again, while being relatively expensive, you don't really want the bastard in melee combat, because while a pretty good fighter, he is still not going to be beating special heroes or lords of other factions anytime soon, and while in melee he can't be casting spells, which is his primary power. And of course you can take a slightly cheaper version with a 
good old sorcerer instead of the sorcerer lord. Now, the sorcerer is not as powerful in magic, and he's not that good of a fighter either, but at the same time, he's quite a lot cheaper. He can be a reasonable close combat character, and he's a plenty potent wizard. Now, for all magic characters, depending on how Creative Assembly decides to implement magic, it's very hard to say if these could even be playable characters, how they would be implemented, so I'm not going to speculate too much into that, and rather, I'm just going to move on to the last hero, which is the Exalted Hero. This guy is essentially your baseline fighting hero. A bit weaker stat line than a Chaos Lord, and a hell of a lot fewer equipment options, but still a damn powerful fighter, capable of taking on most fighters from uh, the vast majority of the other factions. And as a final note, if they do implement a proper character progression system, Chaos characters would have available to them all kinds of cool little mutations, which would add a little bit of an extra element of awesome to many of your favorite characters, while also vastly increasing their combat prowess. While, though, vastly improving, they could also be negative, of course. But, again, we don't know anything about any of that, so pure speculation. Anyways, I've already used way too much time on the heroes, so I'll try to pick it up a bit. First we get to the Chaos Warriors. Now, the Chaos Warriors are pretty damn simply said super heavy melee infantry, some of the best in the Warhammer world, and can be equipped as a standard with a sword and shield, making them pretty damn grindy, with two close combat weapons, which gives them an extra attack and gives them a lot of melee oomph, turning them into a really, really, really good charging unit with the capabilities of absolutely butchering units upon impact. Or you could give them halberds, which of course gives them bonuses towards mounted units and a bit of an extra strength plus. Warriors of Chaos can also be given the marks of specific gods. They can be given a mark of Corn for more attack, a mark of Nurgle for more toughness, a mark of Slanesh for more initiative and speed, so on. In total war terms, these guys are brutally simple. They are super heavy melee infantry. And while pretty damn expensive and relatively slow, they are fully armored in Chaos armor with years of combat experience backing them up, and in many cases, special weapons, shields, etc. as well, meaning that they would probably want to be one of the best melee units in the game. The only thing that could really challenge these guys in a straight-up fight would have to be something along the lines of ogres, or some of the more elite elven units. They also come in a mounted variant, in which case they are known as Chaos Knights. And the Chaos Knights were, until very recently, the deadliest heavy cavalry in the Warhammer universe, only very recently surpassed by the Rhinox Riders of the Ogres, which are <laughs> even more ridiculous. But even so, upgraded with, for example, a Mark of Corn, Chaos Knights are still some absolute massively powerful melee units that hit like a tsunami, capable of breaking most units on the charge, and even if they don't, they are damn fine melee fighters. Clad in the same chaos armor as their foot-slogging cousins, which means that they can eat almost anything you can throw at them, and wander out the other side smiling. Have these guys be the bodyguards for your Chaos Lord, and you have an absolutely ridiculous joke of a melee unit that will just chew through practically anything. And again, not that hard to implement, they are just super heavy cavalry. Fairly slow by cavalry standards, seeing as even the horses are covered in bloody plate armor, but with an absolutely devastating impact, and although they lack lances for that extra oomph on the charge, they are near unrivaled melee combatants. And the third and final form that your Chaos Warriors will take is the Chaos Chariot. Now, this is a relatively simple wooden chariot with Chaos Warriors manning it. Now, it's a relatively heavy chariot, so it hits pretty damn hard. 
and the Chaos Warriors on the back are no slouches either. So they are essentially kind of a unit of Chaos Knights, except they are a little bit more focused towards the charge rather than the grindy combat that follows. Now, the Total War series has always had a bit of a problem with chariots. Either they're too stupid to fight, they're too intelligent, I could almost say, in which case they just pass through the unit, then wheel perfectly on the spot, and then pass straight back through the unit again, making them essentially in fucking vulnerable. So, I would say that this should work kind of like a unit of monsters perhaps uh, five models per unit, where their primary goal is of course to charge into a unit, and if they can't break them, their charge gets wasted. They get stuck in melee combat, as it is assumed that the reason they stopped is because enemy warriors managed to slow down the chariot enough. In which case, they fight in melee combat. Now this is going to require a little bit of work from the Creative Assembly Animation Department to have the Chaos Warriors fighting properly from the back and maybe having the uh, horses attacking. But really, if they want to implement chariots, they should put the, in the effort to actually make sure the chariots, you know, work. A naive idea perhaps, but oh well. I'm a hopeful sort of guy, I suppose. But now that we've touched upon the super heavy bastards, let's take a look at something slightly more basic. The Chaos Marauders. Well, the Chaos Warriors are ridiculously expensive considering they are basic infantry, the Chaos Marauders are the cheap and cheerful alternative. Now, Chaos Marauders are still pretty damn good in a fight. They are by no means bad, however, they are not covered head to toe in Chaos Armor, in fact, they wear very little armor at all, which means that ranged weapons are going to absolutely tear into these poor little bastards. Now, their lack of armor makes me want to say that they should be a horde-sized unit of 240-ish models, but the fact that they're so damn good in melee makes me think that they're probably just fine as a standard uh, infantry unit and about 120 dudes, and should in most cases simply be used as a relatively simple and cheap way to fill up your army, as Chaos Warriors are ridiculously expensive, the Chaos Marauders offer a relatively similar performance in melee combat for a much lower price. These guys, of course, also come in a mounted variety, the Marauder Horsemen. Again, their role is essentially to be cheaper versions of the Chaos Knights. The Marauders are light cavalry, with a pretty damn good movement speed, and possessing the only non-magical ranged attack in your army, throwing weapons in the form of javelins. And while they are light cavalry, they are still chaos light cavalry, and so they will outfight most enemy light cavalry in a straight up fight, with the possible exception of elven light cavalry. And though again, they don't really wear any armor, so they're going to be falling like absolute flies to any kind of ranged attack. But being pretty damn fast, especially considering it's a chaos army, these guys are probably the fastest stuff you have, unless you've got a demon prince with wings, you should be able to move clear of most of the incoming horribleness. And once again, being relatively cheap, they are a wonderful unit to add numbers to your army. For example, you can move up the Chaos Knights up front to eat most of the incoming archery fire and then supplement them with Chaos Marauders. Last for the core units is the Chaos Warhounds. Now, Warhounds are, well, exactly what you think they are, except they're considerably bigger than normal doggies being mutated by Chaos. They're really, really damn fast, really cheap for Chaos units. No armor whatsoever, again, as the theme here drops like flies to any kind of ranged attacks. However, they're not horrible in combat. They're probably not going to be able to beat a unit of light cavalry, but they will be tying them down for quite a while, allowing you to get some Marauder Horsemen into them. Though primarily the Chaos Warhounds are 
guarding units and flanking units. You use these guys to absorb a charge from enemy cavalry that's heading for your unit's flanks, or you use them to attack the flanks of units already engaged by your other units. And of course, they are perfectly suitable for hunting down units of skirmishers or artillery crew, and while they probably can't kill most light cavalry, they can certainly tie them down for a nice long time. Now, for the last of the more or less human-looking units, we have the Chaos Chosen. They're slightly more expensive than normal Chaos Warriors, but they're also a little bit better in combat. Now, in total of war terms, I almost think that they're just going to ignore this unit and just give us Chaos of Warriors because Chosens aren't that much better than warriors in most regards. They are essentially just warriors, except they usually have some kind of bonus for being marked by a particular chaos power. So if anything, I'd kind of like to see this unit replaced by a unit named um, Chosens of Korn, Chosen of Slanesh, Chosen of Nurgle, etc. that have uh, some kind of special rule to them, giving them a little bit more flavor rather than just a unit that's slightly better at melee combat. Anyways, my hopes and dreams aside, let's move on to the next unit, the Gore Beast Chariot. While, in essence, it is just a chariot, it is not pulled by your average horsey. This giant evil-looking monkey creature pulling the chariot is pretty much, well, as dangerous as the chariot, if not more so. To the point where this is quite literally a monster. It could be considered essentially an upgraded version of the chariots, again a 5-man unit or so, with uh, less charging power, as the Gore Beast isn't quite as fast as just a good old pair of horses. But it makes up for that in its melee killing power, which could be a pretty cool unit, really, and it could make for some pretty damn awesome uh, synergy with the normal chariots. You send in the normal chariots to inflict a bunch of impact hits, scatter the unit, make them uh, a little bit more disorganized, then you send in this bastard to finish the job. Could be a cool unit, and again, it very much so depends on how Creative Assembly wants to implement chariots. I just really, really hope they don't go with the Total War Rome 2 version, because those chariots were far too light to represent this kind of brute force monstrosity. Speaking of brute force monstrosity, Chaos Ogres. Because, as I said in the Chaos video, all things are susceptible to the warping powers of Chaos, Ogres being no exceptions, and, well, being always hungry and therefore always killing stuff, are pretty damn susceptible to the call of corn. And while personally I find the ogres to be a little bit superfluous in a chaos army, seeing as uh, you've already got plenty of bashy bastards, so uh, the ogres kind of feel like a bit too much. Uh, it's a bad way of wording it. They're too expensive for what they do. You have stuff that costs less, which in and of itself is a rarity in a Chaos Army, that does pretty much the same job. Now, of course, you can give them various marks of the various gods, giving them increased attacks, toughness, regeneration, etc. Cool things. They could be a really interesting unit in the Total War game, as you could give them all kinds of interesting mutations and marks of Chaos, etc. And, again, there is a wonderfully funny little thing in the Chaos Army. If they do implement a proper character system, they could allow you to use any races within the faction, which means you could have an ogre leading your army, you could have an ogre character, and having an ogre character leveling him up to an ogre lord, for example, an exalted ogre, onto an ogre demon prince. Oh, wouldn't that just be adorable? But if you insist on just having a little bit more killing power than what the average Chaos Warrior can offer, and the ogres don't quite hit your fancy, never fear, the Chaos Army's got you covered. In the form of the big bad bastards, the Dragon Ogres. 
Much like ogres, they are ridiculously good at melee combat, they can be equipped with great weapons, they're really damn fast at movement 7, with impact hits, immune to lightning, tons of base attack, an incredible stat line, and the ability to absolutely ruffle stomp pretty much anything in their way. These guys are the perfect elite unit murderers, as they have the charging speed to catch most units flat-footed, allowing them to absolutely butcher units of knights, whose only real answer to a unit of dragon ogres is the fact that they've got lances and therefore have a reasonably good chance of wounding the bastards on the charge. This should be a 5-man units in total war terms, I believe. They would be ridiculously expensive, and they should be, if not make them a limited unit, maybe just give you one of these bastards, and if you get them killed, well, sucks to be you. Because when you have units that are this big, this awesome, and this powerful, you want to keep that power in the Total War game. But at the same time, if you could make an army of these bastards, given enough time and enough money, eh, yeah, kind of bullshit. Something you should be able to make an army out of, though, are the trolls. Ah, trolls. I love trolls. They're cheaper than dragon ogres, with a reasonably equal-ish stat line and regeneration. And while not quite as wonderful an elite unit killer as the Dragon Ogres, because they move quite a lot slower, the Trolls are still perfectly able of munching on most heavily armored infantry units. And as an added bonus, the Trolls again have the wonderful little vomit attack. And after so many big tough units, let's move on to something a little bit more... Uh, Fragile and artsy looking, the Hellstriders of Slanesh. These bastards are essentially Marauder horsemen on steroids. They're quite a lot more expensive, but they essentially do the same job as the Marauder horsemen, except they do it better in every single way. While the Marauder horsemen are going to struggle quite a bit against lots of elite light cavalry, Hellstriders of Slanesh are exactly the kind of elite light cavalry you need to deal with them. With a very powerful charge, and the fact that, well, the mount is a bloody demon. The rider is a bloody demon. So they're pretty damn potent in combat, but again, as you can see, they're not exactly over-blessed with armor, and so suffers from much the same weakness that the Marauder Horsemen do, in that they are pretty damn easy to butcher en masse with most missile weapons. But if even that isn't quite enough light cavalry killing power for you, there's always the Chimera. This wonderful thingy creature flies, which means it's pretty damn fast and it can catch enemy light cavalry units. And while the Hellstriders of Slanesh will almost certainly make light work of them, if even they are struggling, the Chimera will do the job just fine. Additionally, being a flying creature, it is an absolutely wonderful little thingy bob to murder enemy artillery and ranged units, protecting your Hellstriders and Marauders from all of that horrible pointy long-range death. In Total War terms, I'd say this should be a single model monster. Not because they're particularly powerful as monsters, but because they're flyers, which means that they can punch far above their weight class by simply engaging stuff that are, you know, shit in melee. And you might not have that much of an ability to block the thing. Now, we've finally arrived at the rare units, the proper big old bastards. First off, we'll start off with the Dragon Ogre Shagath. If the regular Dragon Ogres just weren't quite big enough for you, there's the Shagath. The monster is so big and horrible it is essentially designated as an anti-monster unit. You don't waste a Shagath killing infantry. This is the kind of brute you send after enemy ogres or giants or particularly retarded heroes. And again, you can give the bastard a two-handed weapon. And with his rather considerable movement speed, he's able to catch most units too. And once he's caught something, oh, it's not going to be living for very long. In Total War terms, again, I'd say this should probably be a one or 
maybe two model unit as its real objective would be to deal with uh, special stuff along the lines of giants, uh, ogres, monsters, those kinds of things. And with the sheer brutish mass of the damned thing, you could still use this against normal infantry, but you're gonna have to support it with something a bit more numerous. Speaking of giants though, Chaos of course has access to giants. Now, giants in Warhammer are essentially effective because they've got a fuck ton of special rules. Now, implementing many of those rules in Total War Warhammer is going to be a bit problematic. A few of them are pretty damn simple, like jump up and down. The giant simply, you know, jumps up and down. Pretty damn simple, it would cause AoE damage to the unit affected. Or a hit with club. Again, relatively self explanatory. The giant simply just smashes the unit with his club and causes a fair bit of damage doing so. But other rules might be a little bit more problematic. Like, for example, oh, I don't know, um, shove down trousers, for example. In which case, the giant picks up a rather unfortunate individual and shoves him down his pants. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm having a bit of a problem uh, picturing... Oh god, that's a terrible... Oh, that is a horrible uh, term of phrase there. <clears throat> I'm having a bit of a trouble uh, imagining... Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> In short, I'm not entirely sure this would be all that easy to implement, unless you just simply make him a big dude that hits things with his stick. Which... Oh, Jesus, stick. <sighs> I'm just going to move on now before I really start mind raping myself. So we'll take the Hell Cannon next, the only war machine in the Chaos Warriors army. This thing fires, well, essentially corrupted Chaos Essence. It deals a massive amount of damage once they hit in a template, so it's wonderful for nice big packed up units. Should probably be deployed in units of four like most other artillery, and would in most cases function as normal artillery, except for one slight little detail. The Hell Cannons are not machines, they are essentially bound demons. Which means that if an enemy unit gets too close to them, they might just run rampant. Those giant chains you see around them are not for show, they are there to keep the crazy ass demon in check. So if a unit gets too close, it would have to do some kind of leadership test. If it failed, it goes berserk and charges the unit. Now, hell cannons are actually not that damn terrible in melee combat, but they're pretty damn slow. So a canny opponent will move up a unit of light cavalry, for example, have the hell cannon charge them, then simply just pull away, wasting one of your very, very few and pretty damn precious ranged units in just chasing light cavalry around the map. Then there's the Chaos Spawn, the uh, Chaos Warriors that tried to ascend the demonhood but failed miserably. Chaos Spawns are, well, they're giant balls of murder, essentially. You don't have much control over these bastards, to the point where I would almost say they should be used like Warhounds in uh, Rome 2 where they are essentially given to a unit, uh, let's say for example you got a unit of 60 Chaos Warriors, while a normal unit would be 120, except this unit of 60 Chaos Warriors has three Chaos Spawns in their ranks. You get close enough, you release the spawns, the spawns charge towards whatever's in front of them, and nobble them. And spawns are not bad in combat. As you can see from the models, they are essentially just heaving masses of chaos with teeth, claws, and all manners of horrible stuff poking out of pretty much every single orifice. And if they don't have a particular orifice pointing in the correct direction, they'll simply just grow one. Could be an interesting unit. Don't really want to see it as a controllable unit because, well, chaos spawns are batshit insane. They don't really listen to orders all that well. Something that does listen to order are the Skull Crusher. Now, if the ogres riding rhinoxes was scary, well, these are Chaos Chosen Warriors riding rhinoxes made out of demonic metal. While not quite as retarded, 
hardened on the sheer heavy side, as ochre rhinoxes, skull crushers are still absolutely not to be sniffed at, and will give even rhinox riders a run for their money. And again, this unit, and more importantly, this mount is so ridiculously heavily armored that they do not require any real amount of subtlety. While with Marauder Horsemen you need to be avoiding enemy ranged weapons, these guys march them straight towards those archers. They will not give the faintest of shits. In total war terms, this again should be a monster unit of maximum three characters, I'd say, because, well, one, Skull Crushers are redonkulously rare in the Warhammer universe. Hey, these things... these things barely exist beyond the realms of the Chaos Portal itself, so having these guys be readily available would be kinda insane. And of course, additionally, they are giant metal rhinos. If they don't break whatever they hit on the charge, they'll finish them off in melee. And, seeing as I'm thinking you're starting to see a bit of a theme here with the Chaos Army, we'll move on to yet another horrifying combat monster, the Slaughter Brute. Now, I want you to just look at this bloody thing for a moment and imagine what it would be to fight something like this. The thing is armored like a tank and armed with enough bad temper to make even the pissiest of feminist organization look like pussycats in comparison. In any other army, this thing would be the absolute biggest, baddest, most horrifying melee monstrosity you had available. But this is the worst of chaos, and so I introduce to you the Mutalith Vortex Beast. This thing isn't just armored like a tank, and it isn't just armed with an absolute horrifying claws. This thing is Chaos Incarnate. It is a Chaos Spawn on steroids. And it channels the raw power of the Warp Thread. Essentially, it is a giant bloody rock drill of a creature. It will just laugh at pretty much anything you put in front of it. The only real answer to a creature like this is some kind of specialized anti-big bad bastard killer, or some special character. Now, both of these units should work the same way in Total War Warhammer as single model monsters. These guys charge, these guys wreck. And they are going to require a pretty focused response from your opponent's side to deal with. In the case of the Slaughter Brute, though, I'd say you should probably be able to just recruit this thing as more or less a normal unit, but the Vortex Beast, that should probably be some kind of special summon or event creature just because, uh, eh, powerful. <laughs> Last up, I'll quickly mention the uh, mounts available to your hero characters. You've got the Chaos Steed, basic horse with uh, heavy barding. You got the Demonic Mount, which is a demonic horse. It's faster, it's stronger, it's tougher, capable of using more armor than a Chaos Steed. You've got the Chaos Chariot. Yep, you can mount your Chaos Lord on a Chaos Chariot for even more woomph. You can mount him on a Manticore, which, uh, yeah, it's essentially a Chimera, just nastier. Definitely works. Or on a Chaos Dragon, if you just want to go full retard. And uh, this was a pretty damn long one, uh, mostly because Chaos just has a ridiculous amount of units. So if you're still by some miracle watching this, thank you, Mirafoch, for watching. Um, if you liked it, please like and subscribe. I've been Arch. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.